um, which means next time you come, you open laptop, it will be, there will be a green button in the middle of the screen saying it's dead. Click the button. So once you click it, it will wake up. So it will take the same amount of time that stuff that happened to me, probably a minute or so, but it will return to the same condition with which you left it at. So essentially you can go on six months holiday, come back, click on green button, and it will bring you to exactly the same point we, we, which you had when you left for ho when you left for holiday. Um, so that one is interesting. What's that? Yeah, there's also other stuff that you can do based on uh, the ma man management team part. This is also good. Um, so, code space lives within your repository. Remember, I said the settings lives within repositories, but quite often you have developers who work with multiple repositories. You may have, I don't know, front end in one, back end in another, some logic in the microservice in other five. Sometimes you will have developer opening like three, four, five repositories in VS Code in a single application. Can be done as well, so you can do that. Um, currently, it's a hack, but we are actually working on native support, so you have, without hacking, you can easily open code space in uh, multiple repositories in one code space. Also great for monorepos monorepos. How many companies, how many people use monorepos here? I really love seeing that number of hands because I hate it. It's such a, a pain. But for those who do use it, it's also possible. You can, uh, you can have multiple dev containers with different settings in different folders. So depending on which subfolder slash project you're working with in Monorepo, you will be able to pick up those settings as well. Ah, this one is different, interesting. Let me try something which has 90% chance of failure, but when it works, it's freaking amazing. GitHub.com slash GitHub, GitHub. Is it the one? No. So, what you're looking at is the source code of GitHub. The repository with the whole source code of GitHub the whole platform. So imagine how much is here, like how much code is here. Now, if it works, it will blow your mind. Count the time. Let's see. Let's count the time. When it works. Boom. That's what all our developers use. All GitHub developers are on working on code spaces only. Um, so for new developer who comes to work on GitHub, literally, what, one minute, not even one minute, to start actually working. The whole GitHub repository with all the extensions that you need, with all the dependencies that you need, is loaded within under a minute. The code spaces is a feature of GitHub company. Yes. I thought it's a separate company that they call it. No. No, no, no. We don't make do that separate. Ah. So a lot of people think, um, so especially people from older times who worked with GitHub, um, I still have customers who come and say, oh, GitHub, it's repositories. 10 years ago, yeah, it was repositories. Now it's the whole suite of products uh, which can pretty much cover everything, almost everything you do for development. Uh, from, we can take over, uh, we have CI CD, take over Jenkins, Circle CI, um, bring those customers in. We will obviously repositories, security tools, uh, Jira, <coughs> Jira <coughs> and we can take over that. Um, and clouds, we can use your C. Absolutely, yep. So that's how you can, that's huge repository of GitHub can be opened by a new developer within a minute. Um, the reason it opens that quickly is because you can pre-build that code space. Um, there are drawbacks, benefits and drawbacks of doing that. Um, 
the pre-build costs you a little bit more because you're preparing that and have it hot, warm, ready. But it, because you've done that, starting a new code space will take only a few seconds. So our GitHub uh, repository with source code of GitHub, it has been pre-built. So it will take only less than a minute to start. Okay, what else? Uh, how can you use code spaces? Everybody, how, how many people here have GitHub accounts? You have 60 hours per month of code spaces for free. 60, 60, six zero. Six zero. 60 hours. 60 hours, yep. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. For your personal projects, it's probably more than you need, really. With the CPU processing power as well, for yeah, free. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, you will get that uh, for 60 hours for free every month. Um, there are a few things that we are working on, like you wanted GPU. It's something that we are working on. Um, out of the box, it's only Linux and VS Code. So if you do any development on C Sharp or you need Windows command prompt, sorry, uh, keep buying 16 core machines. Um, but if it's Linux, not a problem. Um, the UI is only VS Code. I do know that we ha you can connect a different client. We release support for different client to connect to code space. Other than VS Code, I just can't recall which one. This one is interesting. This one more uh, applicable to enterprise customers. You can specify which Azure subnet to start code space in, because a lot of customers have issues. Well, I don't know where you start that VM. It could be in some region I don't trust, or in some area I don't trust. I want it to start in my subnet, where I have my own policy configured and security set up, and I'm happy with that. So once that one is in, those customers, security folks from those companies will be very happy. And that one will allow you to connect to your internal network. So sometimes what happens is you have an application you're developing here, but you have a staging database, a development database sitting somewhere in a server in your, in your company. Once we're in the cloud, we can't access your server. Um, it won't work. So with this one, we can actually establish VPN connectivity with your server, so you will be working with your cloud uh, environment and still be able to use your company resources on premises if needed. Okay, um, there will be some bunch, I have the same QR code at the end, so if you want to snap it, steal it, feel free, but if not, there will be more at the end. Um, any questions? Go for it. Yeah, so I guess with regards to the source code, can you like hide the visibility of the source code um, for like specific users? When you say hide visibility in GitHub? Oh, uh, I guess I mean like I guess on the development instance. Like say for example, there's a bunch of like environment keys or something that you want like in. Is that something that's you can do? So what happens when I start code space? It it starts at the end. It loads VS Code environment and it checks out my repository into that environment. So how do you solve that problem with your local laptop? Um, like in terms of like, uh, like starting an instance, uh, I guess like, you know, I don't really know, <laughs> yeah. So it, the way you think about, you should think about it, it's not much different from how you use your laptop. Yeah. But it's just that CPU now is in the cloud. That, that's the only main difference. Okay. I see, yeah. so it's just a you know, simple like, cloud instance of the, the system. In a nutshell, in yeah. a nutshell, yeah. However, to your point about keys and everything, um, you should have code your keys in your application, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> No, you shouldn't, right? For keys and everything, there are key management solutions exist there. Like there is Azure has its own, Amazon has its own, GitHub has its own. So in in every repository on GitHub, you can set uh, store your keys. 
where's my secret, 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 secret? Come on. Oh, it, I think it's in actions. Secrets. No? Where it's for secret? keys. No, secrets, here. <coughs> so I can create three type of keys. Commonly used is either actions or false spaces. So I can create some keys which will be only used within the context of this code space. However, when I use it, I will actually, will never know the value of that key. I will refer to it only by name. So I can create something like super secret secret, and it will be like that. In my code space, I will refer to that secret by that. I will never know what the actual secret is. So that's how we solve it on GitHub. Um, and when I create it within code space context, I can only use it within code space. When I create it as action secret, I will only be able to use it in my workflows. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I think I'll answer my question. Like, yeah. But if you want secrets to be some secrets to let's say start an application, you deploy application to Azure and you start that application and you need a secret to connect to database, it's better to use vendors secret management system from Azure, AWS, Google to uh, manage those secrets. Yeah. Hey, any other questions? Yes. So code space currently, and I don't think it will ever change, it's only on Azure. Um, the subnet, which is coming, it's really, it's more, it, it's only really applicable to security people. A lot of security folks are very conscious about, um, like when I demo code space to people, as soon as I know the security people are coming, I'm like, okay, I know what's coming. Because straight away it will be, okay, somebody just managed to have some computing power, spin, out, spin it off somewhere, which I don't manage. And you have my code there, and I can't manage it. That's a big red flag from security. What they want is ability to control who has access to that computing environment. So for those people, we say, okay, we will give you an option the, a lot of enterprise customers have Azure infrastructure, which they already set up with proper security controls in place. So what we're telling them is we will give you an option rather than spin it off somewhere, we'll spin it off in your infrastructure. So your security people will be happy. Yeah, but we are not planning to do it in AWS or somewhere else. For starters, <coughs> it's competitor. Uh, secondly, um, why pay somebody when we can have its internal cost? <laughs> right. yeah. Yes? Yeah, you mentioned GPU is coming. Um, do you know how it will be uh, made available to the users? My gut feel is, remember that drop down when it had how many CPUs? There will probably another draw, another value, one GPU, two GPUs, 10,000 GPUs, okay. Bitcoin GPUs. And what type of GPU? I've, I haven't even seen how it looks. So it's, it's so far it's in discussions. I know that uh, the team is looking into that. I don't even know it, what stage it is in. But yeah, some customers want GPU because their application requires GPU. So it's a big roadblock for those. Yes. Copilot. Yes. Can you just explain or get a bit of detail what's the role of the copilot? Not a problem. <laughs> Copilot. Who heard about Copilot? Okay, good. Good. Big disclaimer. That's my big disclaimer about Copilot. Copilot is based on AI. Anything to do with AI, A, it's a live demo. B, it's never the same. It's always unpredictable. Whatever. Anytime I type something in my demo today, the result I get today will be the result I got different from yesterday and day before. 
So whatever I will be showing you today, there is 200% chance that something will go differently from yesterday. Um, hopefully I know enough about Copilot to work around it, but it will be different, so expect that. So what is Copilot? Um, in a nutshell, Copilot is an extension into your IDE. Um, the way I explain it in very simple terms, you type, it types, you accept. That's it, in a nutshell. That ex extension monitors what you are typing. As soon as you stop typing or pause typing, it will grab the data from your IDE, it will send it to Copilot infrastructure, it will come back with suggestions, and you will see what it suggested. You will have an option to accept it or decline it or keep typing in a nutshell. That's what it does. Um, it does a few things very well. It's not a magic wand, so I'll explain it later. So first, what it does, increase developable predictivity. So it's very good at uh, generating boilerplate code. So for example, you're a developer, you want to, you start writing, you need to create an array of 12 months. You start doing uh, months equal open bracket January, February, March. By, the, by April, I'm already bored, and I have to type until December. With Copilot, as soon as I start months equal bracket, it will give you the whole string. So instead of spending a minute, and in my case it could be two because I have to go back and fix all the spelling errors I, I'll do. Um, so instead of doing one or two minutes, it will be like that. And that's only 12 months. What if it's 365 days? Or a temperature uh, between zero and 100 in increments of 0 0.7? Um, so that's what it does great. Boilerplate code. Um, in terms of accelerating innovation, that's an interesting one. And actually, you will see it um, in a demo. It sometimes suggests you stuff that you haven't considered, like new idea to try. Um, you, you planned to do A and B. It suggests you 77. I'm like, hold on a sec, that's interesting. I haven't planned on doing that, but it fits with what I'm doing there. Maybe I'll modify what I plan to do and expand it based on that. So it sparks this creativity. And lastly, skill gaps. That's, I experienced it personally. Um, on, in December, my whole family went overseas. I was alone, home alone for a month. Comes Boxing Day. I have, my wife is coming day after Christmas. So Boxing Christmas, I have nothing to do. I opened up laptop. I started a pilot in two days from zero in Python. I'm not a developer. From zero in Python, absolute zero in Python, in two days, I was able to create application which takes CSV input. Um, it looks at uh, Excel input, I think. Yeah, Excel input. It looks at CSV mapping file, and based on mapping file, it modifies, 